We show you how farmers and ranchers do their part to help protect the environment. And that includes both agriculture and aquaculture. Case in point, a Maryland oyster farm where the tasty shellfish is both a cash crop and a way to clean up the Chesapeake Bay. Oh, I love it. I couldn't see myself in an office. You know, I love the work, I love coming in, I look forward to Monday. Kevin McLaren is a relative newcomer to Chesapeake Bay. He moved here in 1999. But this former Massachusetts resident says he's fallen in love with this huge historic estuary and the famous oysters grown and harvested here. We're about 100 miles from the ocean here. We're in a brackish environment where from a biological standpoint, that's where oysters want to live. You get this broth of, of minerals and flavors that you know, produce an oyster with, you know, I think, an exceptional flavor. Welcome to the farm, an oyster farm. Here, where the freshwater Chop Tank River flows into the Salty Bay, is where you'll find Chop Tank Oyster Company. Kevin and his partners hand raise close to two million oysters each year. What shellfish allows you to do is to is to make the product better by offering a consistent product all the time, but it's eating the same food as its wild cousins. I always say we're a little bit more like ranching than we are like farming. We're not really growing these oysters, we're just kind of taking care of them until they're ready for market. That care begins here at the hatchery, where the oysters grow from microscopic larvae into these tiny creatures called spat. Well, there's probably a thousand oysters in that hatchery. That's right, what looks like a handful of wet sand is actually thousands of oysters attached to bits of broken shell. After about three weeks, they're transferred onto these boxes made from window screens. They'll grow to about the size of a quarter and then be moved to these floats right on the bay, as many as 10,000 in each one. We grow them for a half a summer, and then we pull them out, we split them, tumble them, and put them back into bags at a lower level. At, at, you know, and so we'll put them back in at maybe 5,000. And that process continues over two years until they're large enough to harvest. Even after two years, some oysters are still too small. They're separated and put back in the water. The harvested oysters are then taken to a facility close by where they're washed, and packed into boxes destined for stores and restaurants all over Maryland. What's going on, Kevin? What's going on, guys? Some customers, like Travis Todd, can't wait for delivery. They take them right off the dock. Travis is the third generation of the Todd family at the Ocean Odyssey restaurant. They've been serving local seafood since 1947. It's a really clean, vibrant, I mean, it just tastes like nature, you know? What I really, really like about it is the fact that this is our local and native oyster, yet it's being grown, um, it's being grown rather than just harvested in the wild. What we have is some uh, rendered bacon, and keep the fat, uh, you're gonna add to that fat, you're gonna add onion and garlic. Today, Travis is making Oysters Bubba Feller, a variation on the famous Oysters Rockefeller. Cracked pepper, lemon juice, heavy cream, arugula, and Parmesan cheese. All mixed and baked into cheesy goodness. As soon as you bread these things, you want to get them in the fryer. For something different, how about a po' boy? Shucked and breaded and fried, made from oysters less than an hour from the water. Ocean Odyssey is one of the local restaurants we have, and he uses our oysters in everything because he sees the quality of it, and for him, it's worth it. Chesapeake Bay is one of the world's largest estuaries. It's 200 miles long and as much as 30 miles wide, fed by 150 rivers and streams. That mix of fresh and salt water proved perfect for oysters and oystermen, who've been reaping Chesapeake's waterborne bounty for centuries. But in the last 50 years, population growth brought water pollution and disease. Today, the wild oyster population is less than 1% of what it was in the late 1800s. 20 years ago, some 6,000 oystermen worked these waters. Today, there are fewer than 500. Oysters are considered a keystone species, which means you know, it, it really does, it is the linchpin for the health of the bay. Kevin says oysters are more than just a product. They're an essential part of a healthy ecosystem. The guys who do this testing will tell you that an adult oyster will, will filter 50 gallons a day. 
out of the out, out of the bay, you know, filtering it, taking the algae out. Thanks to efforts by dozens of environmental groups, scientists, and government agencies, Chesapeake Bay is slowly getting cleaner. Everyone who enjoys or makes a living from this cherished shellfish shares the same hope, and in small ways, each is doing their part. But if we could get the oysters back to historic levels, you know, you would see this, the, the, the green color drop out of this water in no time at all. Every oyster that's coming off my farm is one more wild oyster that's left in place. This may take a long time, but it may work. The fact that we can grow great products like this, uh, make them marketable, sell them, and improve the water systems as we go along, um, that to me is just a win for everybody.